Good morning. I just figured I'd give you guys a tour of our morning chores here on our home. Um, we've got, well, the girls will probably join me in a second, but I have to put my coffee down. Girls ready? Yeah. Yeah? I'm gonna be filming for everybody to see kind of what we do for chores in the morning. All right, let's go on out. The goats will probably come running to us. Here they come. <laughs> Hi. This, we call him Stud Muffin. He is our buck that we are breeding with the goats right now. Wait, Stud Muffin? Yeah, that's what Dad and I have been calling him. <laughs> this is Louisa. She's kind of the mama of the herd. Hey, shh. We got Lilac, Agatha, can I tell you, Maud, can I, can I tell the, the, the attention hogs, Petunia. Petunia. Oh, hi. <laughs> and that is Violet. This yep. is Lilac. Yep, this is Violet. She's sweet. Hi. Those very Good kind. morning. So it's such a nice day. Oh my goodness. This is kind of our normal morning routine. Sometimes if the older kids have the day off and can watch the baby, the younger ones come out and play. Sometimes all of them come out and join me. Okay, we're going to let the chickens out. Let's see. The goats try to join me, so we have to close the door quick. You want to come in? All right, we're going to close quick. All right, so we're gonna let the chickens. Oh, I'll show you our coop. Coop. Um, it's an old shed that we just converted. We definitely have some work to do. To we're probably gonna end up getting rid of this door and framing in um, a smaller door, make a coop door. You want in? Okay. Come on in. Don't let the goats in. Oops, sorry, babe. Okay. All right. So we'll probably end up replacing that probably sooner than later. And then we've got a little bird dust bath and then <laughs> a pallet swing for the birds, which Addie usually gets on and swings. All right, here we go. What is that? Good morning. All right, good morning, ladies. I'll look and see if there's an egg. You wanna go look? Okay. Go ahead and look. I don't know that we'll have one this morning. It's usually afternoon. Okay, let me open this up. Oh, we got a brick in the way. Okay, so this is our coop. Need to be clean it actually before we hit really cold winters. There's two! No, those are ceramic, honey. <laughs> those are ceramic eggs. That's to encourage the chickens to actually lay in the nesting boxes. What? Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Look at your hair. Okay, so this is the little system we have set up so far. Our chicks, they don't really lay in the nesting bins. I got these little ceramic brown eggs to try to encourage them to. It's not working. So, typically where they lay is right under the bin, and then um, also in this corner. I don't know why. Um, we have a solar-powered fan, so as the light comes up, it'll ventilate properly. We've got some ventilation um, boxes here. It's a solar-powered light. Um, and then this is our watering system. We got the food and water. Uh, we did it really cheap, maybe 20 bucks, I don't know. Um, and then our little roosting thing that Kenny made. How are you? Hmm? How are you? girls.
Okay, she is such a good mama that even at eight months old, she's not weaning her babies. She loves her babies. Now we're gonna go to the goat, the goat shelter. shelter. <laughs> she likes helping with chores. Yeah. So normally this is not covered, but this is what we're doing now to kind of keep a wind barrier. So here's the goat shelter. So this is this will be our kidding pen right now, um, and this is one we separate the kids from the mamas at night when they're in milk. I do not milk twice a day because I like to have a life. So um, we end up letting them milk during the day or um, drink milk during the day, and then at night we separate them so I can milk them in the morning. So we've got this makeshift um, hay bin and hay, hay feeder, whatever. Um, looks like I need to clean the stalls again. Come out here a couple times a week and clean them. This is our milking stand. It's kind of hard to see because we've got it in here in protection. Um, I'll show more videos when they're back in milk. We've given them a break because we're wanting to breed them and um, get ready for this next kidding season. So we're going to fill up water. This is the little water thing that we have for them. We'll have to expand on this later when we get more goats, but um, it's heated. Take a sip of coffee. This is what I do between chores. It's an addiction. So right now we're just doing this. We fill up buckets and we build our herd larger. We're gonna have to get to the point where we come up with something different. I'm looking into all kinds of options. Digging a well, um, extending a hose, or running a water line. I don't know. When it gets too cold to do this outside, we'll bring it inside and fill it up in the bathtub. Swimming pool. <laughs> it is like a swimming pool. Do you know why we do that? No. Okay, so I took just regular water bottles. I may end up switching this to a gallon jug now that we've got a bigger water container. But I fill these up with basically really concentrated salt water. Just mixing salt and water until it dissolves. Um, I put them in there and theoretically <laughs> can you pick that up babe? Oh, you got gloves huh? Okay. Theoretically it's supposed to help um, the surface of the water to not freeze, but it's an experiment. We're gonna see how it goes. Okay, now we're gonna go to the little hay shed or tool shed. Um, everything is multi-purpose here right now until we have more things built. But we keep our hay in the shed. And our larger amounts of hay we keep under this tarp over here. Eventually it'd be amazing to have a barn. Okay, it's hard to tell in this enclosed space, but we've got about six hay bales here. Normally we have seven or eight. Um, I fill up hay every morning. I check it just about every night. Make sure that we always have hay for them. Um, they eat less and less as they get to for, you know, forage on the ground and in the trees and stuff. But um, this, we typically bring it over about once a week, once every two weeks. It depends on how much they're eating. But I'll fill this up and bring it back. Hi, everyone. All right, Hi, we're just everyone. walking around. Aren't you a fashion statement? Yes. It's going to be a nice day. So this is what we've got going on with our garden. Hopefully future garden. Um, I had the garden 
back there. And it really was, I don't know, it was too far away from the house. Um, probably not big enough for what we're doing this next year. So here's what we've got going. Um, I take, clean out the stalls once or twice a week. And with the discard hay and droppings, you know, poop and, uh, we kind of wheelbarrow over here, spread really thick. And then I have a big pile of mulch over there that I bring out here. So I'm slowly making this into a big garden. We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's something new we're trying. Um, it's called back to Eden method. Now they recommend you do manure straight down or compost. Um, I'm not doing that uh, since it's the fall. I'm spreading this now and it will de, it will break down and be ready, I think next spring, we'll see. If not, it's gonna be a plan B. So eventually um, this garden is gonna span from here, clear on towards the house. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know, can you see it? Maybe. So we've got, um, It'll be pretty big. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm planning on a huge garden this year, hopefully enough to feed our family most of our fruits and vegetables. Um, we've been planting an orchard, a little mini orchard full of dwarf trees. Um, these are IBC containers and we're gonna hook those up to the gutters to get free rainwater to water the garden. Okay, so that's some of the hay we've got going. Um, we've got some raised beds over here. I'm actually gonna recycle that box and turn it into a little bed, I think. Um, we'll see. This is my herb garden. It did pretty well this year. I didn't plant much, but next year I'm planting more. I've got a bunch of cilantro. Um, I cut my basil. Um, there's rosemary, green onions, peppermint. That's about all I've got going right now. I'd love to plant more next year. And then this is my strawberry patch. Um, obviously, I need to pull weeds, but I'm getting ready to actually mulch over all of this. Some of the leaves came. That's great, but I'll mulch over it for the winter. Okay, um, now I guess I'll show you guys a little bit that I've got going. I have big plans for the front yard. So, um, this little section here is going to be all garden. Um, when we moved in, there was pretty much nothing here. Um, a few bulbs, some iris, um, but that was it. There wasn't any flowers or anything. So I'll kind of show you what I've got going, what I planted this year. Okay, so I transplanted this from our old house. Um, it's just a little knockout rose. There's one over there too. That one hasn't done as well. But this one's doing pretty good. It was just a stub when I moved it. Um, got some lilacs over here that I transplanted. Um, I took a bunch of stuff, just starts of stuff from our old house. I did a tree order from Missouri Conservation. Got a bunch of pretty flowering trees. I got this red bud. Um, that Rosa Sharon is actually a transplant from our old house and it did really well but it's my favorite season and yet it's a hard season because everything starts dying off and that kind of makes me sad there's my wisteria my mother-in-law got me that and I planted it in the ground it was a dry dead stick and we were not sure anything was going to come of it and nothing did for months and then probably about two months ago it just all of a sudden grew and it grew that fast in two months. It was insane. Um, so I'll have to pin it across, you know, secure it across so that it's not growing and weighing down the gutters, but it was exciting. And then see all my stuff is dying off. And I apologize. We practically live on our front porch, so it's full of toys and garden tools. And it's kind of crazy but this is how we live. Um, my mom's did really well. I've actually cut a bunch of them. 
they got so heavy they started weighing down. I've got a bunch of them and brought them inside. Um, huge, huge moms. So as a kid, um, one of the houses that we lived in, I had my own garden. It was just the little side of the house, but it had, um, it was a whole garden of just uh, almost nothing but moms, but I absolutely love growing moms. I don't know why, but I do. These turned out pretty good this year. I'm, I'm happy with them. Um, I'd like to get more. Um, I'd love to have a place where I have a three, maybe even four season garden. That'd be pretty cool. So over here, we've got, whoa, that is bright sun. <laughs> um, we've got rose mallows. Um, I ordered these from Missouri Conservation and just kind of planted them along the fence line. Um, they are, they get pretty tall, probably six to eight feet tall. And they're, um, Got these huge, it looks like hibiscus flowers. They're just absolutely huge. So eventually this will kind of be a shrub line. Um, this next year I'm hoping to plant um, some climbing rose bushes along the fence line to kind of be a backdrop of, of color. Um, and then here, I'll have to show you up close, but here we're starting our mini orchard. So right there is our crab apple that was already established. There's one over here, unfortunately. We had a pole, power pole replaced and the power line guys um, accidentally just split it. it it's not good. Um, I think it, it'll live, it's fine, but it's just not as pretty, it was gorgeous before. Um, gorgeous like that one. Uh, these are beautiful in the spring. All right, so I have here, We've got an apple tree, another apple tree. Um, these are dwarf and <laughs> a funny story. My son was planting these and he did a great job planting them. He just forgot to tell me which ones he planted where. So we planted six trees. I think really three only made it. Um, I don't know whether this is a nectarine or a peach. I'm gonna have to look it up. I have no idea. So I'll prune these whenever, um, probably December, January. I wanna wait till they're a little more dormant and all the leaves fall. Um, but I'll be pruning these up to look really nice for now. They're here. And I've been working on spreading mold um, all across the front. There was no mold or anything across here. So kind of doing the same thing I'm doing to the veggie garden. And eventually, this entire front yard is going to be a beautiful mini orchard with flowers and herbs and everything mixed all around. Um, probably most of it will be mulched because the kids and Kenny don't really love having to mow and trim around it. <laughs> so I've got a, it's like a dwarf, I don't remember what this is. My sister got it for me and I absolutely love it. It's like a dwarf lilac, beautiful purple flowers. So this was the first year it actually got to bloom and I enjoyed it so much. I actually, she bought it for me a couple years ago and I transferred it or transplanted it from our old house. I just couldn't leave it. Um, sorry, our house sits very close to a busy road. We have 10 acres but it's on a busy road. So, excuse the noise. Um, these are my wild plums I planted. And then my mom gave me a whole bunch of daylilies and irises and I have them all planted all throughout here. Our big cedar tree. It definitely needs a little bit of attention. Um, well, that's it for now, I think. Um, most things are kind of dying off, but enjoying the last little bits of it that I can. 